Hello guys and welcome in this new video on the game engine series. In the previous video we've been talking about timer and delta time. So uh, we talked about the fact that there are two ways of making animation. The first way is by using the frame rate. So, uh, but the problem by the frame rate animation is, the, is that whenever I change the computer and go to someone who has a different frame rate, frame rate on his computer then um, the result is not going to be the same so either it's going to be running faster or slower that's why we went for better uh, for the second option which is uh, a time based animation so like for example our player here is able to move you can see the, um, that the movement is quite uh, uniform we don't have sometimes the player running faster than other times and that's exactly what we wanted. We don't want something that is going to be changing around when uh, just a little thing change. And yeah, we created our timer class and we use it to uh, to update the the physics of the players, as you can see right here. Now, in this video, we're going to be moving a little bit further and start talking about game map. So we're going to be creating map like like this one right here, as you can see. So if you if you've seen the the showcase in the beginning of this video, you see you probably see this map right here with the player running around. So we're gonna be starting this. We can cover all that in this video, but we're gonna be creating our layer and uh, map class in this video, and in, in the next one we're gonna be creating our map puzzle so that we can actually render this on the screen and have this nice result as we expect. So let's get started. Now, in order for us to uh, start with that, we need to create a new class. So we're going to be creating a new class. We're going to be calling it layer. So it's going to be an abstract class for all types of layers. So because we have different types of layers, we have image layers, we have tile layers. Right here, we only use tile layers. And you can see our map actually has over five layers right here. And yeah, we want to create, but those are tile layer. But we're going to be creating a layer as an abstract class, and then tile layer would, will simply inherit from layer and get some important component from there. So this is going to be a header file. We don't need any CPP file because we're not going to be implementing any function on that, right? So that's why we make sure we put it in the, in the new folder called map. So that folder needs to be called map. So we create it and we say yes. So you can see right here we have our uh, new folder added with our new class. So I don't need this destructor right now. The, the default one will do the job. So um, the constructor also I don't need it right now and the private tank also. Now um, we need to add two basic functions all map need to be drawn on the screen so that's why we need to have the render function and uh, an update function which can be you know according to the case uh, used to update some stuff on the screen whenever you want to build a destructible map so you could have an update function to actually update the new map the, uh, the, the new state and all that kind of stuff so virtual void we're gonna say render and we also want to say virtual so we're actually using the virtual tag because this class is going to be like a father class of other classes with the virtual we're actually saying that call exactly this function by the class where he's implemented so we want to actually make sure that those function has to be implemented by the child classes so update and yeah say equal to zero we leave it right now we don't need to add a delta time so if we need to use that we'll add that later but for now just leave it like that so now we need to create another class this was just the layer because if you see right here this is like a map and this map has layers and tile set so now the first thing we want to create right now the next thing we want to create is the map so we create like a basic form of layers since the map is going to be taking layers that's why it was important for us to create layer first 
Now we want to create like a game map. So a new class. You're gonna be stored in the same folder, so make sure you check that out. And we also want to make it single header. We don't want to make um, any C plus plus five because the implementation is not so huge. So we don't need like um, like a C plus plus five for that. But if you want, you can still do it. It doesn't matter. So um, call it game map instead. Game map. Now we don't want the CPP file, and we create it. We say yes. Okay. So we open it. So it's open right here. Before we get started, we need to include some uh, important stuff right here. The first thing is going to be to include a layer that we just created because the map has layers. So we want to include that as well. So we want to include the vector because we're going to be creating a vector for all those layers. Since it has many layers and we don't exactly know how many layers the map can take, we need to define a vector for that. So and down here we remove this private. We don't need this destructor right here. And we're going to be defining our vector for all layers. So we say vector and it's going to be layer, a pointer of layers. And we're going to say map layers. We have our map layers created. So um, we don't actually need this constructor either. We're going to be using the default one. I want to write at less code as possible so if I have to remove something then I will I'm sorry if you don't like it so just deal with that settle that in your mind so void render and uh, we want a render function which is going to be rendering all layers which are in this vector right here and for that we simply need to do a for loop we'll simply say unsign and i is equal to 0 e smaller than m map layer size and we want to increment this and what we want to do is we we'll simply take the current value of the map of the layer and throw it on the screen map layer e and we call the render function just like that and we have to do the same thing for the update so we simply copy this and paste it right here and change this to update do the same thing for yeah. And now we also want to create a new function uh, like a method called get layers, get map layers, because we we're gonna be uh, dealing with uh, collision later, and the player is gonna be interacting with some of these uh, layers. So that's why we need to get them from outside and use them to make collision and stuff. So go ahead and create a new function. The layer, sorry. So and I'm, and I'm gonna call it get map layers and we simply return our map layers. So I think that's it for now for this uh, game map class. We're gonna be adding stuff later, but now we want it like that. Now the next step is to create specific type of layers. So I've been talking about tile layers. So here we don't have any image layer, but we're going to be dealing with that later. But we actually starting with tile layer. So we're going to be creating a new, a new class called tile layer, which is going to inherit from layer. So we say tile layer, oh. tile layer, and uh, well, this one will have the CPP file also. Make sure you put it in the map folder. We want to make things as organized as possible. So, and we can create this. Yes. Okay. So, we open our layer that patch dot uh, edge. We remove this protected, and we don't need the destructor. But the constructor will be important for us. That's why we can keep it in this case. Now, if you see right here, tile layers actually have tile set that we'll use to draw uh, the images and uh, all those components right here. That's why it's also important for us to define another kind of data 
which is going to be a structure for us a tile set you can see right here we have the tile set and if I switch over to the setting of a tile set you can see it has some important information like the ID we have this ID which is the ID of this of the current tile this is the this is a 32 by 32 tile set so each each tile has um, 32 pixels by 32 pixels so on width and height you can see right here and each image has like an ID which is actually the index the position of that image so we start from zero till the end right here I think the last one is here yeah the last one is 363 those are the IDs those are some important components that we will need because when we will create our map puzzle we will actually use those IDs to draw things on the screen so let me show you for example how this map looks um, internally so I have to find the file first so if I go over here and show you you can see we have here a huge map with numbers and those numbers are actually those IDs the IDs of those tiles so our map has actually take this ID and search that tile set and somehow I we will see that later the algorithm that we created search that exact image and draw it on the screen at the right place where we want it to be and you can see we have all our layers listed uh, from top to bottom and this is actually the ID about this and that's that's important for us so we're gonna be creating this component called tile set because we need that but first we need to include some couple of things right here so since this class is going to be inheriting from layer we need to include layer and uh, we're also going to be using strings and so that's why it's important to add we also need a vector so we have those three components now let's create our struct for tile set the tile set as we said is an image with many images but with many tile many box images and yeah we need some important things like for example the first id because the way um tile actually handle many tile sets because you can see right here in my case so if i go back to this if i have to close this i have uh, many tile set you can see right here we have two we can have 20 if we want that's not important and tile actually handles those tile set like this whenever we have the first tile set the id start from zero till the end of that first tile set you can see right here let me show you so we have this one right here we have the first id which is one it actually start uh, internally by one but in our program we're going to be starting by zero that's a little bit annoying but we have to deal with that so the first id is one and the last one is tile count minus one the tile count is the number of tile which this tile set actually has so it starts from one till this and the second one which you can see right here the first id start by tile count of the previous tile set plus one that's why it's important for us to have this first id which we are trying to define right here so the first id is definitely important for us so we're going to be seeing the usage of that later but for now just kind of get that like that so last id and uh, yeah it's also important to know how many rows and columns does this tile set actually as you can see right here we have those are rows and we have columns over there we want to know that because we're going to be creating our algorithm to actually pass those image the exact tile and draw it on the screen that's important so we have gnome columns also and um, yeah we also want to know the tile count how many count does this tile set actually has so we have the tile size is it a 32 by 32 um, tile set or a 16 by 16 or whatever and also we want to know the name tile so which one is it for example here we have this uh, jungle terrain and object so those are the name that we actually gonna be using because those names are gonna be used by the texture manager to load them and we will simply access them in this layer and throw them on the screen so now the source is gonna be 
the file name that actually has all of those components that's really important for us now we actually gonna be having some uh, important types here we don't want to be writing um, std vector tile set every time we simply say tile set list so tile set list we'll call it like that and also instead of creating this two-dimensional um, vector array we're simply gonna be using the tile map as the name of this and it will be simple for us to actually define a new object instead of writing this all the time because this space here is important so if you do it like this it won't work that's why we need to make this space and i don't want to mess around with this because you can have some you know some kind of weird issue while working when this kind of thing get be forgotten so that's why we want to make sure we define this first and just use it throughout the code now okay down here we want to define some important component to our tile layer the first thing is the tile size tile size of this tile layer which is going to be an integer and we're also going to define number of rows so we could say row count you know i prefer to stay consistent with my stuff row count and call count use it like that row count and call count since we say tile count and stuff so we want to make consistent so then we say call the, the member tag in the beginning so and we say call count so those are the two guys so since this is a tile we need to have like this matrix right here with with all these values so each tile layer has a matrix in which we actually store the tile IDs from the tile set you can see this huge array right here it's it's what we're gonna be creating it's actually this two-dimensional map right here that we created that's what we're gonna be heading right now so I'll simply say tile map the type that we define up here and we'll simply say M tile map so let me let me like this and we also want to have a list of tile sets as i was trying to explain a tile um a, a layer can actually have many images from different tile sets you see so i can take images from this and put them here and take from here and put that's why we need a list a list of tile sets so um yeah it's also possible to create to make it so that each layer only has one tile set but it's limited we don't want to do that we want something that could be extend to the infinity so that's why we want to say tile set list and we'll say m tile sets so this is our basic tile set uh, uh, class now we also need to add our method from before since this inherit we haven't had inheritance now so let let us go ahead and add that so we're going to be saying public layer and since this inherit from layer we need to add our two method render and update so we say void render don't forget the visual in front that's important don't want to mess around with that Virtual void update, and we have those two functions defined. So we also want to create um, another function to get the tile map to get this matrix right here, the matrix, the tile matrix. So we want to say inline tile map get tile map. And we simply return sorry simply return our m tile map so this is um, the basic definition of our tile layer and we're gonna switch over to the cpp file and there we're gonna um yeah implement some basic stuff 
like the constructor we need to change some couple of things on the on, on the constructor right now because the constructor is going to be taking some parameters the first one is going to be the tile size or the tile size we also need like um, um, the tile the row count the row count or the row count also need all count and uh, we also have the tile map which is going to be initialized so the parser is going to handle that so just put it right now the tile map and the tile set list all those parameters need to be initialized so we say tile sets so this is our constructor and we can simply switch over here we remove the destructor we don't need it and um, yeah so we're simply going to be initializing our component without having to you know think so much so the way we can do it is we can simply do it um, up here by just doing like and I'll tile size simply say it's equal to tile size Oh, I we need to change the this constructor because the one we have right now, correct one. We edit, edit like this. Better for us to have this. So, simply do it like. Or we can simply do it in here. Tile size is equal to tile size, and um. And row count is equal to row count and count is equal to row count and tile map tile map is equal to tile map and um, tile sets is equal to tile sets so we've initialized all our tile sets. So um, for now we're gonna be leaving it like this for this video because we don't want it to be too long. In the next video we're gonna be uh, starting with our map parser and we'll actually create the render function because it's important for us to actually uh, create our parser first because we need to understand some principle in order for us to implement those functions uh, down here. So I hope you guys enjoying it. Um, consider supporting me on Patreon and hit that subscribe button down there and like this video if you find the content interesting. And if you have any concern or question, uh, write in the comment section below and uh, we'll see how to handle that. Thank you. Ciao.